I'll tell you what, I thought I was I got all the school of the Just like I was a
then she's got a separate issue of her back. But that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to be okay. Okay. I don't think she wants to be Better than her.
Good morning. How's everybody? Yeah, great. Let's all be great. It's great to be here this morning, I think. So anyway, welcome to First Methodist Church here in Bridgeport. Uh, if you are a visitor, we just would love for you to fill out the white card that's in the back of the pew so that we can uh, know that you are here. And if you have a prayer request, uh, the yellow card is for that. You can put either one or both in the offering plate when it's passed here in just a little bit. I also want to welcome our Facebook family because there's a lot of you. Uh, sometimes I forget to say that. I apologize. Just a few announcements this morning. Um, let's start off with the, the Christmas boxes. Many of you will, will remember we did these last year. Uh, you, you take however many boxes you want and you fill them up. This is for children around the world. You can read more about it on the update. There's, and there's links so that I'm not gonna go into the whole thing. Get however many boxes you want. It's gonna take about $25 a box to fill it up, plus $10 for shipping. So you might wanna keep that in mind. The inside shows how to do it. So that simple. There are some boxes out here. There are more coming. So uh, just keep that in mind. Tracy, could I add a little something? Of course you can. If anyone is not able to do their own shopping, but they'd like to have a box still, you can do it online. But I do, I would just love to do your shopping for you. It is just such a blessing. But some of you may not be able to do that, and I'll be happy to do that. But you just make that donation, okay? Thank you, Vaughn. And the, the deadline to bring those back in is November 10th, which is also our friends and family celebration. So we thought it'd be a neat time to have that deadline and, and have the presentation then. Okay, um, let's see. Operation Christian Child. Oh, let's talk about October 20th, which is our uh, community service down at the hub on Housel. Um, that will be so there will not be service here. <clears throat> we will join together as a community there. That will be at 10 a.m. Again, all the information is on the update, but what I wanna add is that for those who have volunteered or if you're still going to volunteer, tomorrow's your last day to be able to do that. For those who are volunteering to help, there are two different training sessions they're identical, you only need to go to one. The, the first is Tuesday the 15th at, at the First Baptist Church at 6 p.m. The second opportunity is Thursday the 17th at 7 p.m. And um, we'll get that in an email for those who, who need to know that. So that's that, oh, and your deadline to get your t-shirt, the links on the update is also tomorrow. The, let's look in our bulletin, the Gals and Grace, they're going to the Dallas Arboretum on October 21st. Your deadline to get your ticket is this Friday, and you can do that in the office. And I think that's what all I'm going to talk about. Go look at your, your update. There's a lot more information there. So let us go from um, this to worship. That is why we're here. So let's forget about tomorrow. Um, let's forget about last week's football game. And, um, and, and just go from there, right? Let's concentrate on the Holy Spirit. Open up your heart, your mind. Let him in because he is here amongst us. And so that we can have a wonderful worship service to our Lord. So if you'll open your bulletin. And follow along. I'm, I'm going to start out the call to worship, and then you can see where you chime in. Jesus calls to us to join him in joyful worship. He has prepared a feast of faith and peace for all people. For Christ is a feast of salvation for the world. Let us go to the table together and share in the bounty of Christ Jesus as a for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. If you would please bow your head. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for the joy we share as we gather in your holy name. We thank you for the breath of life, the cool of the morning, and the warmth of the day as we sing, pray, and give thanks to you in the joy of worship. By the guidance of your Holy Spirit and the teaching of your scripture, nurture us throughout this time and the week to come. Open us to hear you speak to our hearts and feel your presence as you move us through this time of worship. Forgive us of our sins and fill us with the joy of a clean and open heart. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Would you please stand with us and turn in your hymnals to hymn number eight, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, and we'll sing verses one, two, and four this morning. <laughs> I believe that God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
tithes that are offered. We sing and we lift up our prayers together and hear the scriptures read and the word of the Lord. We continue in our worship also with the gifts that we return back to God for, the, for God to use through the church in his ministries. So let us pray. Almighty and holy God, we thank you, dear Lord, for this time, this morning, our worship. We thank you for all the goodness that you have poured out upon us, for all goodness that comes from you. We ask that you will bless this portion we return to you. Bless it and multiply it for the good of your ministry, for the good of the kingdom of heaven. For in Christ we pray. Amen.
So I'd like to start out with, with the joys, uh, well, the joy, and first of all, uh, serving the Lord. And Tracy mentioned several different coming opportunities, and they're, they're good times, fun times, but they're also in service of God. And uh, when we serve the Lord, somehow in that interesting way that God turns around and blesses us. We don't serve because we want to be blessed, but we serve and we are blessed. And we give thanks for the opportunity to do so. I want to lift up our, our youth and children's programs that are growing and going strong. I'm very grateful and um, make sure and say hey to Randy and Austin and, and everybody who's helping out. We really do appreciate it. And then, uh, how about some more joys? Do we have any other joys? Yes, ma'am. Last week we prayed for the um, for my 
stepmom who was just waiting on the Lord to take her home, and she's with him now. She died in peace, knowing that she was going to be with him. And we grieve, we grieve, but we grieve with joy. Thank you. That, and it was a joy to see her. I think we're going to have to sing joy, 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 joy down in my heart sometimes to kind of get us motivated. <laughs> Remember, you know, count your blessings. You've heard that before. Um, and then we look at our prayer concerns. And De Debbie Sells uh, has had some stomach, intestinal issues. And uh, she's in the hospital, but they know, they know what's going on. And they're taking care of her at this time. Let us please keep... Debbie, and of course, Dan in our prayers. She should have surgery tomorrow. It's tomorrow? Okay. Do you know what hospital? Decatur. Decatur? Okay. And also, speaking of surgery, John Chris will be having a shoulder surgery uh, this coming week. So let us keep him Beverly in our prayers. And we have to lift up the, the victims of the, of the hurricane. Um, it is, well, every time it, the news comes on and they tell a little more of the story, it just, it just grows, it gets bigger. And we don't, you may know somebody, uh, I don't think I know anybody in it, but they matter. They're part of our human family and me, I'm a part of the body of Christ in which we're called to to share, share our love with Christ with. So let us keep them in our prayers for a long time. As it will take quite a while to, to get over, if you will, uh, or recoup, recuperate from, from this great storm. And of course, those who have, have passed from the storm. And any other, before we go on to sympathy, are there any other prayer concerns? Okay. And the family of Tamara Etheridge, who's a, a cousin of Tish. Sorry, Tish, but we'll put them in our prayers. Any other concerns or joys we want to lift up? Oh, okay. Alice's town. Alice, Alice Towns' mom has passed away. So let us please keep the Towns family in our prayers. Let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and holy God, we give thanks to you. We gather together this morning, and it is a blessing. Whether we're here in this building or we're across the world from the internet, it's just, it is a joy to be one with you and in you. And we give our thanks. We ask that you will lead us and guide us. We give thanks to you for the forgiveness of our sins. And ask that you will guide us as individuals as well as a congregation. And we may truly do your will and be a blessing for you to this world. We ask you, Lord, to be with those on our prayer list and the names we've listed up. Bless them. May your, may your healing hand be upon them. And may your peace be within them. May they be reminded that they are loved by you, prayer of the Lord. Dear God, we ask that you will not only guide us as a congregation, but also as a community and as a nation. We lift up our nation, Lord peace and understanding and may we truly hear and see where you would have us go we lift up the nations of the world we pray for we pray for peace yes in, in Ukraine and, and in the Holy Land and throughout this world at homes in our own homes across this land and we give thanks to the Lord for those who are willing to put on a uniform every day and step out across this world, across the globe, home on our own streets, to keep us from the violence, to protect us, 
for those who answer our answer our calls of distress. The, hur the hurricane victims, as we lift them up, we, we give thanks and lift up the responders and all those who put themselves in the line of care. We ask that you will bless them and keep them. And we give thanks, O oh Lord. And we give thanks for all who care for it. Care for us who come to rescue in, in, in time of need. Or just simply individuals who answer for the love of Christ. We thank you and give thanks for the teachers, for all the all the people of and to come to us. We ask that you will be with us as we lift up the prayer that your Son of Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I will continue in power and the glory and glory. Now as we continue and we invite the children to gather in the back of Rick and Vaughn as they go to the children's church. And why don't I sing a little song? Y'all know the words. Jesus loves me. Don't make me sing by myself. <laughs> Jesus loves me. for your presence. And we ask that you'll bless, bless them, bless them in their heart. Bless Campbell in her heart and to remind them and to remind her that you, Jesus, our Lord, loves her very, very much. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Of our lives, 
may your word be shown. Amen. Today's reading comes from Mark 9, 38 through 41, and I'll be reading the scripture from my living Bible. One of his disciples, John, told him one day, Teacher, we saw a man using your name to cast out demons, but we told him not to. He did not belong to our group. Don't forbid him, said Jesus, for no one doing miracles in my name will quickly turn against me. Whoever is, isn't, whoever isn't against us is for us. If anyone so much as gives you a cup of water because you are Christ, I say finally, he won't lose his reward. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And thank you for that reading. The name of the name of the uh, sermon or message today is, is really really about what we're doing in our lives. You know, on our way to Jerusalem, that is what is happening in the scripture. The disciples and Jesus are on their way to just on their way to Jerusalem. In a very real sense, we are always on our way to Jerusalem. As we move and make a journey within our own lives, and we share together and share with hopefully we're open and hear the Holy Spirit and we share with the Holy Spirit this journey that we make. As we continue to grow, like the disciples continue to grow, and we can tell from this these last few stories that the disciples had a lot of growing to do, and I think often so do we. As as we journey with Christ and we spend time with Him, we find out that maybe we don't always have things quite like we is wrapped up and is part of a package as we think we. As we think we do. There may actually be some things that, that are happening that we don't quite understand. There's some good going on that we don't quite grasp, or maybe it's just not what we thought of, or maybe it is just something a little bit a little bit different, and it catches us by surprise. In this in this story, we we it really we would go back one verse and as Jesus says, um, it's talking to the disciples, it's, you know, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. In other words, God, by welcoming the ones who come in the name of God, not, not as a way of saying that when they come and come to Christ, that we all of a sudden are, are deserve something special. We've already received something special. We've already received something of great importance. Something that is hopefully life changing. Something that is so important to us that we want to share it and give it because you can't hold on to it. It's counterintuitive to the way that Christ works. It is a gift to be given. And as much as we give away, the more we receive. It's, it's, it's not the kind of, a, I guess you could say that it's not, it's not like the economy of, of human beings, but it's God's economy. And sometimes we just miss it. We just miss the point. So we have Jesus, and he's been talking to his disciples. He's been talking to people around him. There's all kinds of things that have been going on as they're, as they're, as they're moving out. They're still in Galilee, but they're moving. And, pre and he's preaching, and miracles are happening. Things are happening. And it's like going to Jerusalem. But yet the disciples, and I think in this case, well, actually, in, in just about all cases, we find the church described in the disciples. Because 
Even though they always think, oh man, what, you know, what's up with these guys? Why don't they get it? Why don't they get it? You know, can't they grab a hold of what Jesus is doing? Don't they see what he's doing? Don't they care that, that maybe they're a little confused about who he's helping, who he's reaching out to? But no, they, there's something lacking. And sometimes there's something lacking even in our own journey to Jerusalem. And to our own walk with Christ as we move with Christ. Jesus is teaching them and he's trying to get across to them that actually he's going to Jerusalem and he will be assaulted. And this is the same one that they have seen do all kinds of miracles. We, you know, we, we see in our own life what the Holy Spirit can do. And we have felt the Holy Spirit and felt what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives to make a difference. But do you ever find yourself the, kind of forgetting that? Forgetting really the power of God and what God has done in your life? I have. As I grab a hold of the situation, I grab a hold of the moment and charge forward as if God is the second time. And the disciples are, are going through something very similar to this. As, as God is kind of, even the right next to Jesus, God is kind of a second thought. As they move towards Gal through Galilee to Jerusalem, as they move in their spiritual walk like us, closer to God, closer to the love of God, understanding something that is completely incomprehensible to us before. As we move to Jerusalem, as we make our journey, and the disciples. They even argue about who's the greatest. We talked about that last week. Can you imagine arguing about who's the greatest and Jesus is walking right next to you and Jesus hears you? That would really, I mean, I bet there's a lot of looking at their feet and, you know, kicking the dirt around and wondering, oh, well, he heard us. But it still hadn't changed their, their concept. It's, they still don't quite get what is going on. And Jesus is changing the world. He's changing history. He's changing the lives of anyone who will accept and just, just open themselves up to what is going on or what he offers us. And what he offers us is a life that it's what they call it eternal life. It's a life with God. It's a life that we can actually go and, and develop a relationship, a relationship with Almighty God. How in the world do you have a relationship with the creator of the universe? The entirety of the universe. How in the world do you have a relationship with someone, someone who hasn't been created? See, God boggles my mind. Absolutely, beautifully, so different. And really, and I, I, and I think of God, I think of my own weakness. But at the same time, sometimes I'll, I'll get down and I'll start charging out without him. Charging in, in it's like I'm going to speak about God and speak to God and, and speak of God and, and, and carry the mantle of, of, of Christ and actually leave him behind. It happens. Hopefully not very often. But when it does, we, we create a problem. When it does, we begin to get in the way of what Christ is doing. And this is such a, a great example from the scriptures of, of Jesus is, is, is walking, talking, preaching, and just got to having a conversation about, you know, you really want to be great guys. You got to be like the little, the little ones. And, and he's using the children as, as, yes, very real in what we need to do for the children, but also as the young ones in Christ. In other words, those who are new in coming to Jesus, those who are new and, and just beginning to realize who this Jesus is, or trying to get an idea of who this Jesus is. We, we think that God is, a, is, is, is hard to grasp and get a hold of for us today. But can you imagine walking next to Jesus Christ and all that he's doing and seeing some of the miracles that go, that go beyond our understanding of reality? Sometimes it's hard to get a hold of. And we begin to think, well, we'll just pray. We'll just, we'll just begin to, to reshape Christ. We'll begin, we'll begin to shape Jesus in, in the way that we understand best. I think it's very human. I think we do it a lot. But 
We look at the 12 disciples and we see 12 completely different people throughout the entire Gospels. Do they ever, they get along, but I mean, do they, do they ever really, you know, are they, are they like this? No, they're, they're disagreeing, they're arguing, they're saying, I'm greater, I'm better than you, but Jesus, and, you know, God, no, I'm, I'm, more the, I'm more the one who's going to sit at his right hand. When he comes to his kingdom and all the glory, and, and, and he mentions the cross, and it goes right over their head, because we don't like that story, so we certainly don't want to participate in it. And we miss these beautiful and the beauty that he's bringing to this world. We miss that he is driving out evil as he, as he encounters, encounters the, the, spirit of, the spirit of the empire, the spirit of, the, the spirit of, 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 of evil, the, the demonic. The, every, everywhere he goes, he's changing something. And it's for the good. Everywhere he goes, he's making a difference. And as they're walking along, John comes up and he's the spokesman for, we don't know how many of the disciples, maybe all, maybe all 12, I don't know. But he comes up and, he, and, and, he, and he's really, he's, 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 he's kind of bragging, I think. Hey, Jesus, we saw somebody who was driving out, driving out uh, evil spirits in your name. And we, we tried to stop him, but we couldn't. And Jesus looks at him and says, don't do that. Just because you don't know the guy, just because he's not in our particular group, if he's doing it in my name, if, if he's able to defeat evil, if he's making a difference with the way I want to make a difference, the way Jesus wants to make a difference. Now, when I say I, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the way that the difference the Holy Spirit wants to make in this world. When someone is actually doing that and doing it in the name of Christ, they're, and they're pulling their power, they're opening themselves up for the power of God to flow through them into the people who are desperately in need. And how do you know? How do you know that he's on the right track? Because it worked. You know, it's interesting. John John never says, "Oh, but we we were able to stop him," or he doesn't. He doesn't even give the person any kind of credit for the fact that he actually changed this human being's life forever. We don't know who this person is. They must have heard Jesus talking. They must have encountered him somewhere along the way. And they have opened themselves up to the Holy Spirit. And they are making a difference in the kingdom of heaven on earth. And that's exactly what Jesus is trying to get the disciples to figure out. He's out there seemingly on his own. But he can't because he's doing it in the name of Christ. And he's actually defeating the enemies of Christ. And he's making a difference in people's lives. And sometimes here we go charging out and we actually get in the way of what the Holy Spirit is doing. Because this could not have happened on his own, by his own power. That is, that is, just, that is the, what we have a hard time grabbing a hold of. Everything that, that needs to happen, it needs to happen out of our intellect. It needs to happen out of our strength. It needs to happen because of, of what, who we are. Just like when the disciples said, well, Jesus, he wasn't following us. They didn't say he wasn't following you. All of a sudden, they've co-opted Jesus into us. That's fine if you're talking about being part of Jesus. Being one of the many in Jesus. But when we forget about our, our, our role, what we've been called to do, when we stand up and begin to take too much credit, when we stand up and actually start getting in the way and saying, oh, you're too, you're off base. Well, if they're doing something that is absolutely against what Jesus is teaching and what he's doing, then yes. But a lot of times we just simply don't recognize what the Holy Spirit is doing in this world. We just simply don't recognize the people that the Holy Spirit is working through. There are a lot of people who are doing some wonderfully fantastic things in the name of Christ. Not for themselves, but for Christ. And it's important that the universal church, which 
That throws us all into the pot, right? It's important that the universal church recognize that God may be doing something through someone completely different than ourselves, but it's equally dedicated. And this person had to be incredibly dedicated to Jesus and truly have a remarkable faith faith in nothing less than Jesus. But what he's doing is what Jesus is trying to get the disciples to do and what he's trying to get the church to do. And that is to do his good loving work. Let him flow through us. If you want to be the church, well, that sounded accusatory, I'm sorry. If we want to be the church, we have to let Jesus be the one who works through us. Yes, we have to work. Everybody is working in this story. Everybody is working where Christ is making a difference. And we have been blessed that we may work and that Christ may work through us. In a few weeks, we're going to gather with the entire community and we're going to have a worship service. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. And they're going to do some things that may not be in, in my tradition. That will be in the tradition of Jesus Christ. And it won't be for one individual church. It will be for the goodness of Christ. It will be for the goodness and the healing of the community and anyone who shows up. And we will worship together. We will sing together. My goodness. The world will see the community of Christ in Bridgeport in one spot. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Amen. Amen. Hey, yes. <laughs> Amen. So let us not stand in the way. Let us not interfere with just because, oh, well, we like this, we like worship this way, and we like worship that way, and oh, this is right, this is wrong, or no, just let the Holy Spirit go to work. And not just in a few weeks when we got it together, but right now, every day. Because there's people we don't even know who are turning the world upside down, one person at a time. And the only way they can do it is through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And they know it. And we know it. And there's no one better. And there's no one less. He says at the end that it's, it's like to one of his little ones, it offer him a drink of cold, cool water. Can you imagine getting a drink of cool water in the middle of the Judean desert? Don't forget one another. Don't walk away from one another. If you want some extracurricular reading, read the Gospel of John. And read the prayer where he reached, he, he listed he listed the disciples in the in the future church that we may love one another because there is power in the love of God. I'm absolutely convinced there is power in the love that we share that comes from God. Praise be to God. We have been invited. Amen. Stand with us and turn in the faith we sing to number 2065, more precious than silver.
as this light represents the power of the Holy Spirit, the one who was with that unknown man who was driving out evil and changing lives, the one who was with the, was with the disciples at the beginning of the church and is still with the church. This simple flame is a reminder, is a symbol of the living Holy Spirit who is in your heart and doing work for you. And as it takes, as we take it out, let us fall in our heart the flame that is the Holy Spirit of the living God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks to you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the power and the glory and the, and the warmth of the Spirit that you fill us with. Give us the courage, give us the wisdom, give us the words that we may go forth in this world to do your good work. All glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.